President Trump met Russian President Vladimir Putin in Finland today and delivered one of the most surreal performances by a president in modern American history. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Even before he got to Finland, Trump's foreign trip was one of the more disastrous ones in recent memory. He was in the U.K. where he met Queen Elizabeth, and he immediately embarrassed himself by breaking royal protocol and wandering aimlessly in front of her. <laughs> the queen just disappeared behind Trump. It's like a royal eclipse. The only thing missing was Trump staring directly at it. Also, seriously, you're telling me this guy only weighs 239 pounds? He's so wide, he completely covered a monarch. He David Copperfielded the queen. Trump was also asked during his trip about negotiations between Britain and the European Union over Brexit. In particular, he was asked about the prospect of a hard Brexit, which would involve the U.K. completely leaving the EU's single market. And it was clear from his answer that Trump had absolutely no idea what he was talking about. In fact, it almost seemed like he had never even heard the term hard Brexit before. Because you are going to the U.K. What will be your message on Brexit? Well, Brexit is, uh, you know, I've been reading a lot about Brexit over the last couple of days, and it seems to be turning a little bit differently, where they're getting at least partially involved back with the uh, European Union. Uh, is it heartbreaking? Heart oh, hard Brexit, I said. I thought you said it was heartbreaking. I said, that might be going a little bit too far, right? Heartbreaking. Is it heartbreaking? A lot of things are heartbreaking. No, I, I, would, I would say that, you know, Brexit is Brexit. Oh! <laughs> well, he's not wrong. Brexit is Brexit. Although I beg reporters at his next press conference, someone ask him where the word Brexit comes from. I bet he has no idea. Brexit, I think everyone knows, is the most important meal of the day. <laughs> you gotta have your Brexit. Some mornings I have two Brexits. If Trump weren't so irredeemably awful, his stupidity would almost be... Heartbreaking. Yeah. <laughs> it would be hard Brexit. But Trump managed... Trump's answer managed to make even less sense after that. Watch as he somehow manages to ramble from the topic of Brexit to protesters to how many electoral votes he won in the 2016 election, while also making clear that he doesn't even know which countries are a part of the U.K. I just want the people to be happy. They're great people. And I do think I have... Sure, there'll be protests, because there are always protests. But I think there, hey, there were protests the night of the election both ways. So, you know, we, we, had, a, we had a great night. Uh, protests, there, there might be protests. But I believe that the people in the U.K., Scotland, Ireland, as you know, I have property in Ireland, <laughs> property all over. I think that those people, uh, they like me a lot. Oh my God, Ireland is not part of the UK. They famously fought like a ton of wars over it. Seriously, if you don't believe me, Donald, I dare you to go into any pub in Ireland and tell them that they are part of the UK. <laughs> then, then you can use their free health care to get the pint glass removed from your rectum. <laughs> but if you thought, If you thought all of that was bad, it was nothing compared to Trump's performance today with Putin. Before and during the summit, Trump was obviously very eager to impress Putin. At a press conference in Brussels last week, for example, Trump said, hopefully someday, maybe he'll be a friend. <laughs> now, compare that to what Trump had to say about our European allies yesterday during an interview in Scotland. Trump was asked who his biggest foe is. Now, you might expect that the country that invades its neighbors, interferes in our elections, and uses nerve gas on foreign soil might be the first to come to his mind. But, of course, Trump had a different answer. Who's your biggest competitor, your biggest foe globally right now? Well, I think we have a lot of foes. I think the European Union is a foe, what they do to us in trade. Now, you wouldn't think of the European Union, but they're a foe. Uh, Russia's a foe in certain respects. Uh, China's a foe uh, economically, certainly. Uh, they're a foe. But that doesn't mean they're bad. No, that's exactly what that means. 
if you call someone a foe, that means you think they're bad. You never heard Batman say that Joker is my greatest foe, but other than that, he's a really good dude. <laughs> also, the real foe is whoever said, this is the best hat for your interview. Are you sure? Are you sure it's not too giant and white? <laughs> and once Trump got to Finland, the charm offensive continued. Trump made clear that he was desperate to get in Putin's good graces by repeatedly offering nothing but gushing praise for Russia's hosting of the World Cup. I also want to congratulate Russia and President Putin for having done such an excellent job in hosting the World Cup. It was really one of the best ever, and your team also did very well. It was a great job. I'd like to congratulate you on a really great World Cup, one of the best ever, from what everybody tells me, one of the best ever, and also for your team itself doing so well. I watch quite a bit in the United States. We call it soccer. Everyone, everyone knows we call it soccer in the United States. Trump's like a college sophomore on his first trip abroad. You know, in America, we call the loo a toilet. <laughs> but that doesn't even begin to capture how surreal this summit was. However low your expectations were, Trump managed to go much lower, because just three days after the Justice Department issued an indictment of 12 Russian intelligence officials offering some of the most specific evidence yet of Russian meddling in the 2016 election, the President of the United States twisted himself in knots to take Putin's side. Our relationship has never been worse than it is now. However, that changed as of about four hours ago. Our militaries do get along very well. I think that the United States has been foolish. I think we've all been foolish. There was no collusion at all. It came out as a reason why the Democrats lost an election. There was no collusion. I didn't know the president. What happened to Hillary Clinton's emails? 33,000 emails, gone, just gone. I think in Russia, they wouldn't be gone so easily. President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today. He just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. I'm sure we'll be meeting again in the future, often. Can someone get Trump a glass of water? Because he thirsty. <laughs> it's only a matter of weeks. It's only a matter of weeks before he single white females Putin. <laughs> Do you like my haircut, Vlad? So just to recap, Trump blamed the U.S. for Russian aggression, attacked the FBI in the special counsel's investigation, took Putin's sign on election meddling, attacked Democrats and Hillary Clinton with Putin standing next to him, and said Putin was strong and powerful. Can you imagine what their private meeting was like? I'm worried he let Putin annex one of the 50 states. Here's an electoral map. Pick one of the blue ones. Seriously, Trump gushes over Putin like a flustered 12-year-old who just met Mickey at Disneyland. And Putin treats him like a 12-year-old, as evidenced by the gift he gave the president. President Trump has just mentioned that we've successfully concluded the uh, World Football Cup. Speaking of the football, actually, Mr. President, I'll give this ball to you, and now the ball is in your court. That's right, Putin got a propaganda victory and we got a soccer ball. You really think Trump's gonna play soccer? Look at him. The only way Trump would ever get near a soccer pitch is if he could stay in his golf cart. <laughs> and it got worse from there because Trump went on to peddle an insane conspiracy theory by implying something fishy was going on with the DNC server that was hacked by the Russians. You have groups that are wondering why the FBI never took the server. Why haven't they taken the server? Where is the server? I want to know where is the server and what is the server saying? But I really do want to see the server. I really believe that this will probably go on for a while, but I don't think it can go on without finding out what happened to the server. Oh, my God, he sounds like your uncle trying to get the waiter's attention at a restaurant. <laughs> where is the server? I want more bread, and I don't have any ketchup for my crumpets. Of course, Trump's behavior would be bizarre and suspicious on its own, but we also know, thanks to Mueller's indictment of 12 Russian intelligence operatives on Friday, that Russian hackers were not only helping Trump during the election, but responding directly to him 
when he issued that infamous plea in the summer of 2016 to hack Hillary Clinton's emails. You know, this one. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. Remember when everyone was like, ha ha, Russia's not actually listening, right? It now appears that Russia was listening because on that very same day, Russian officials named in the indictment began hacking into Clinton's server. Not only were they listening, they were taking orders. Everyone acted like it was a joke, but Trump acted like he was at a drive through Oh, uh, yeah, can I get 30,000 missing emails, illegal dirt on my opponent, and as many Big Macs as you can fit in this giant white hat? <laughs> now, even if you put aside the mountains of evidence pointing toward collusion or Trump's financial ties to Russian oligarchs or the possibility that Russia has compromising information on him, there's also the fact that Trump has a very clear personal affinity for authoritarians like Putin. Yesterday, his national security advisor, John Bolton, was asked specifically about Trump's attacks on the media and deflected by talking about World War II. Doesn't that contribute to exactly the kind of undermining of the free press uh, that we see out of Russia? No, I don't think that has anything to do with it. And let's just be clear. Franklin Roosevelt met with Joseph Stalin at a time when uh, activity in Russia was a lot worse than it is today. So let's, let's try and uh, have some historical perspective here and, and not act like we have the attention span of fruit flies. We have the attention span of fruit flies? The dude you work for thinks Ireland is part of the UK. <laughs> and even a fruit fly can remember to let the queen go first. <laughs> and on top of everything else, today a Russian woman who tried to broker a pair of secret meetings between Trump and Putin was charged and accused of working with Americans to carry out a secret Russian effort to influence American politics. So while that was happening, Trump was doing everything he could to ingratiate himself with Putin. He's selling out our democracy, and there's only one word for it. Heartbreaking. This has been a closer look.